Welcome once again to the Ryder Brothers Podcast, the show where we discuss general interest, entertainment, video games, TV shows, movies, and sometimes books. But don't worry, we're not doing a book this week. Maybe next week. I'm joined once again by Carrie Own, Witch in Residence. And of course, my co-host slash co-producer, uh, that guy. Hello. Anyway. Gentlemen. How are you doing today? Excellent. Phenomenal. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about the latest and greatest in Apple TV's new show, Severance. After that, we're going to do a quick little overview of the Star Wars Star Cruiser, as well as the overall state of Star Wars. And finally, we're going to take a quick look at Elden Ring and uh, talk about that. So, gentlemen, John, why don't we start with you this week? What were your thoughts on this week's episode of Severance? My thoughts were wild. I cannot believe how much it changed in just one episode from the two episode release. Uh, I really did not expect them to do this much exposition slash world building in this next episode, but then to simultaneously give us almost nothing. Like, we see where they are, we see why the work life works, and we hear rumors of these little, uh, I think at one point they said that there was an uprising between the different uh, jobs, like the janitorial staff versus these uh, micro dot processors. And oh man, I just, I was blown away. Before we get into it, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys give your thoughts first. Uh, well, this is a series that keeps you guessing the entire time, and this was definitely a, an episode that, that ratcheted that up pretty quick. Uh, I, I was left going, oh, well, wait a minute, what about, oh, and just these moments of, they put together some things, but it really just opened up more questions, and I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, uh, not a whole lot moving plot-wise except a couple of moments, but overall I think it was just establishing the, the world building. And to get into it a little bit, we, we noticed that Patricia Arquette's character appears to be aware of the fact that she is severed, or maybe she's not severed. Um, I think, and this is my theory, I think she's permanently been severed. I think that was part of the agreement to the promotion was that she was going to forever be uh, working for the company. And I don't know, something, some kind of agreement came up with, with the any Audi where she's going to be a permanent Audi now or a permanent any now or something. Um, also, uh, Heli got sent to the break room, which I think we all knew was probably coming. And so we'll see if my theory is correct, that she's just going to embrace the work life and, and, you know, slowly start to turn into the rest of her co-workers, or if she's going to be a, a constant resistor, who knows? So, yeah, I think this, I think the show does a lot of, uh, does a lot of, it brings up a lot of questions and it does feed just enough answers each week that it keeps me coming back. But the entire ride is as boring as it comes off is still just very like i still don't know what's going on any right now and i'm three episodes in and i love it so honestly i'm getting really like it's the ultimate messed up version of the office like <laughs> how dark can you make the office while simultaneously filming drones doing drone work and like i feel like it's amazing as far as like what you brought up with Heli going into the break room, like there's a lot of, I don't know what, it, hypnosis going on. You know, she's staring at a screen, but then they're making eye contact, but then they're saying, I don't believe you. And she's like, yeah, I don't believe me either. So like, they're literally telling her to make feelings about her statement so that she can leave, but also like not giving her any explanation as to like what she did wrong she's just like i'm aware of the things that i did and it's like no you're not i'm not aware 
but then they're like like they're literally giving her the feelings and i think that that's what plays such an important role in this whole like how did the drones stay drones despite constantly losing the majority of their day and, and, and I, one more thing to add, sorry, I just thought of this, but to add to your point about um, the boss, I have the IMDb pulled up and I still forgot her name. Um, it's, is uh, it Miss Casey? Har- no. Uh, Patricia Arquette. Patricia yeah, Arquette. Patricia Harmony. Arquette, who plays Harmony Coville. Oh. Yes, so Harmony, she... What if she is permanently severed, but like that's kind of where Irv is going like Irv the reason he wasn't picked now is because like he's not ready to be severed but like maybe another year or by the end of the season he'll be selected to fully give up the Audi personality so that he can run the Audi's lives like very clearly Harmony is playing a major role in guiding Mark and watching him even his Audi life so I wonder if like that's like the next promotion is like some become the department head, which is like a internal easy promotion that like everybody kind of fights for, but then some get moved all the way out to be like harmony. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was starting to suspect as well was that the that's how you move up in the company is it's either either they're not severed and they know what's going on or that's how they they condition and train you and when i was in the military we had an expression called drinking the kool-aid which is very common to just about anything and irv like he must pound three gallons of kool-aid a day because he's clearly he doesn't even want to let them have their little bingo game which might actually be helpful to get more people on board to to liking the past of liking the founders so to speak and whereas irv he's it's like it's the greatest moment of his life to be able to go to that room whereas everyone else is just like yeah we're not having to do our normal boring work routine it's a great chance to go walk around so they're really playing on a lot of the office tropes where you have the guy you know the guy who loves working that's all he cares about. You have uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't. You have Zach Cherry playing Dylan, who thinks you who doesn't really love working, but he loves his prizes. So the incentives work to keep him happy, and he just has his theories. But he's clearly one of those types. And of course, you have uh, Adam Scott's character Mark, who we have no clue what his motives are really. He seems to be just as lost as the rest of us at times, but he comes off as like he knows what he's doing. However, it's like he could go either way. And then, of course, you know, we have the office rebel, Helly, who's, well, we'll see if she's rebelling next week or if the conditioning, if the break room has successfully broken her. Carry on, please. Share more thoughts. Yeah. um, One of the pieces that really surprised me in the episode is we got a, a general idea of just how old the company could be. Now, again, anything that they give us in terms of information from the company, I treat as suspect, right? I I completely treat as suspect. I feel like they could be lying to any one of the characters at any time. So lying to, you know, like, so lying to us by extension, you know, is entirely possible. But the fact that they've put this thought in that the company is way older than I would have assumed watching the show is fascinating, right? Um, Because now it makes you wonder how long have people been severed, right? And how long have they been doing these practices for? Right. Exactly. uh, And that's that's wild thought. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead, John. Oh, no. I was just commenting on that comment. (laughs) You go ahead. Yeah, it's it, it, the implications of that episode. I mean, they 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 ask so many more questions in just that sequence where they're going through the oh, this is where you know these rich people lived, and it was you know look how great they were, and they've just done so much good for the world, and it's like, and then oh, and the creepy hall of smiles. That one, 
I just, I saw that and I was like, it, there, this is not what we think it is. This has got, this is probably something that's, that's even more worse than what we suspect, or maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is so hard to tell what the smiles mean. My first thought was exactly Helly's. Like I was watching it in the background uh, the first time I watched it, but I watched it again today, and I saw the Hall of Smiles, and then that's when I actually heard her comment, "What are we, a bunch of dentists?" And like for me, mixing in your point, Corian, about the age of the company, the age of the process, and then the amount of like secrecy to the data because like you don't put in this effort unless you really think the data you're hiding needs to be hidden whether it's for nefarious or profiteering reasons you know like are they hiding contracts are they hiding deals hiding potential negotiations or are they hiding like bombs and sleeper agents and stuff like that like we don't know all we know is that they're hiding it (laughs) It could be that they're Colgate. (laughs) Yeah, see, here's the thing, though. I still contest that we're going to find out that all the horrible stuff they do is for some sort of really amazing reason. Like, this is literally a a world-saving reason why they're doing it. Because... Mm, So, like, an actually honorable CIA, but they need to go to these lengths? Um... I was thinking more like something along the lines of the information needs to be processed to solve some major, to prevent some sort of global catastrophe, but the information itself would cause a regular human being to, you know, like go insane or, you know, have some sort of mental breakdown from it. So that's why they have to do this. Oh, what if they're like hacking the Akashic record? And they yeah, can't like actually that. see it or touch it, but that's like they figured out a way to match the feelings to the symbols, and so they're hacking it. Well, they think they're like data mining and like hiding it. In reality, they're giving it more condensed to other readers who then flip it into other. That that's a wild thought. Yeah, or like uh, let, let let's say for example, like this is pie in the sky, completely hypothetical. Uh, although, if I get this right, I want full credit. Um, but what I, what I was thinking is like, say, for example, there's something wrong with the planet and the planet is going to die. OK, and they are going through the entirety of humanity looking for the people that would be the right people to survive this. Now, knowing that you were picking the people that would survive this catastrophe would be really hard for you to do if you knew that was what you were doing. Whoa. Right? So that's we're not a huge thought. Right? Now I'm not saying that that's what it is, but I'm saying it could be something along those lines where it's like, this is such a necessary task, right? But it's you know, but to do it would just be completely soul breaking, which is why they have to do this why they have to separate your innie and your outie. Well, you could just add it to, like, what if they're not saving the world's problem? What if they're saving America's problems doing that? You know, like, they're predicting who wins and who dies based off of the information they're collecting. And that all plays into it, like you just said. Like, you just can't handle that conundrum or that, like, that much control over others. So why just not just tell you you have no control over anything? But in reality, you are literally... Oh, dude, that's like them being the... Uh, the Nilnir from Nordic Legends. Like, they're the yep. ones literally weaving the code of the universe. And so they can't handle that responsibility. So they don't even know they have that responsibility. So then they're also told, You guys have no control. We're taking all control away from you as you literally write the song of the universe. That's the idea. That's, that's wild. That's, that's what I've been that's theorizing. That's a crazy is going concept. On. Yeah, that is uh, that is quite an impressive theory there, Carry On, I must say. And I think I, I definitely feel like the resolution to this this show, whether it happens in this season or probably more likely the second season, or however they end up resolving or explaining what's really going on, I do think it's going to be one of those very 
moral gray areas, as you suggest. And I also think that the show is also still, it, it's, it's still just so much more too, because it's, it's also speaking a lot of com social commentary to the corporate world and also to the idea of ourselves of having split personalities. And like, I think that, that there's a lot of commentary that they can go with where Mark is still struggling with alcohol because of his deceased wife. And it's almost like they're playing the severance element into doing some commentary on that. And again, as, as John said, it's like a messed up version of the office. Well, that's also kind of how it's like in real life. We go in, we have our work personality, and then we go home and we have our home personality. And I've always, me especially, and even in the military, this was a hard one for me to deal with. That's why I drank and smoked like, an, like a sailor. And that it was because I, I hated doing that. I hate being somebody else than I am with other people. And I, I, I feel it's disingenuous. I feel it's like, no, no, you need to be you all the time. I mean, not like, you know, I'm going to swear in front of people at work. There is a certain amount of work etiquette that I agree with. Absolutely. But not to the point where, you know, one day I'm, you know, let's say at home, I'm, I'm the big tough guy jock. No one tells me what to do. And then I go to work and I'm a kiss ass. Let it, no, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. So I really like how the show does a very, and again, this goes back to what I said in the first episode, sci-fi has this beautiful way of, I don't know what's the second episode. Sci-fi has this beautiful way of taking concepts and exaggerations and yet taking those exaggerations while also still simultaneously speaking truth to reality. And that's what I really love about the show. Yes, that is a cool theory that I think will also play into all this social commentary that's going on right now. Um, I just, I also like that the show isn't just trying to keep you hooked with a concept and with, with t constant cliffhangers. It's actually got a lot of, there are a lot of implications to explore with the severance program. And like, we could literally do our whole two hour podcast on each episode. So that's how much in depth it, it, we could really go with this. But at the same time, I still like leaving an aura of mystery on the one hand. I'll be impressed with your theory, but on the other hand, once I start watching it go through, I'll be like, ah, spoilers. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, again, my theory depends upon, you know, what what the actual work is about, right? And yeah. I think when we f we're going to find that out at near the near the peak of the the the, the per story arc, if we find out about it at all, right? It it's entirely possible they never explain what the significance of the work they're doing is. Um, the story could take some sort of twist down a different road, but headcanon, that's where I'm taking it right now until I'm proven different, uh, until I'm proven different, because it adds this neat moral gray attitude. And to your point, look, sci-fi does its best when it's like a, an old mythology morality tale, right? It, it's teaching an, oh, it's using an over, um, like an overdone metaphor to explain real life, you know, quandaries. And yeah, look, when I'm at work, when I do my day job, I appear like a clean living family man. I'm the calm radio voice IT guy. That's like, oh, well, you know, I, I understand. Oh, your mail's all, your email's all screwed up. Well, let's see what we can do to resolve that for you. Like, I'm just as I sound like I'm just as likely to fix your computer as bake you a, a batch of cookies, right? And then I come here, right? And it's not because I'm trying to have a separate persona per se. It's that's what the job requires me to do is to have that calm, relaxed Mr. Rogers kind of feel to me to get people on my side so I can do my job. But it winds up becoming this kind of alternate persona, right? In fact, it's rather kind of funny because there have been times where say somebody who knows me at work and knows me at home will come to me with you know very upset about something and i'll start using like that it calm relaxed voice and taking them through like threat de-escalation they'll just look at me and be like don't work voice me you know like don't 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 de-escalate me i want to be mad at you right 
So uh, we're seeing the extreme of that, right? We're seeing the extreme of, is it worth it? And what are the benef benefits of this? And that's what this show is doing fantastically. Yeah, totally and, agree. Yeah, and I think I think there's nothing wrong with having that calm, uh, relaxed attitude. Um, so yeah, I mean, let, let, you, to take care of. Uh, yeah, there's I mean, you're, wrong you're with having that. Huh? Well, you were in the army. You know, you know, uh, first uh, first oh. lieutenants are always slouching and uh, taking it easy and looking like they're uh, too cool for the rest of the troop, right? Oh, I, uh, I saw <laughs> just the, the, the change where it's like, you know, uh, the, the ones that bother me, and I didn't have too much interaction with this type directly, but I did see it and I witnessed it in the different departments where, you know, it, it, the, the supervisors getting reprimanded by either the, the commanding officer or, or the typically the executive officer. And they're, you know, it's like, yes, sir, yes, sir, okay, sir, I'll take care of it, sir. I'll just, <laughs> and then they come back to the department, you dumb idiots are in so much trouble. And it's like, yeah, I, I just saw what you were doing there. Like, I know you're not actually this tough. And, and, and this it, is it. You don't need that in any work environment. You, you can treat people with the same amount of dignity and respect, and you can treat basically anyone as pretty much an, an equal to, to an extent. Yes, you need an established chain of command because there comes a time when you basically have to use that command override to say, nope, these are your orders, go do them. Um, certain circumstances require it. I've, I've been on missions that are like, you know, we're chasing down a drug boat. This isn't the time to be having a mental breakdown, okay? This is the time to work. We can save the mental breakdown for afterwards. That that's one thing. So I it's for me it's more about having that balance between work personality and home personality that doesn't diverge too much. That you're able to, you know, yes, your friend felt like you were using your work voice, but honestly, from the interaction I've had with you, you also seem like that's how you just kind of want to be in real life too because it's easier to get along with people when you're calm and relaxed versus having split personality. <laughs> so yes, there is a certain amount of work personality you can't get away from. I'm not saying that you have to be a hundred percent who you are at home at work, that that's impossible unless you're doing independent content creation. Uh, but otherwise, but even then we still have to put on a presentation as well. You know, we want to come off as, yeah, you should listen to us cause we're not going to call you stupid. Um, we got to respect our audience. So there is a certain amount of give and take, but what severance is pointing out is you're right. It's pointing out the extreme of too much give and take too much extreme from one side to the other. And that's what happens. People, people see through that when they see this, the, the divergence of personality to that extreme, they're like, I don't even know who you are. Who do I trust? Is the real you, the work you, or is the real you, the home you, or is the real you, the party you. So, that's, or is there even a real you? Is there even a real you? All right. Uh, perspective writer comment in the chat from our friends at Super Game Craft. Check them out. Always call the audience stupid. We do it. Seems to work well. Uh, you know, that might work for a soft R production. And and I don't disagree with, with the method for those that works. It's just we're trying to be a little more, I don't know. Personally, I'm... I'm just tired of assuming the audience's uh, intelligence, and I'm just going to talk the way I normally talk. Exactly. And, and the way I normally talk is obviously personalized and obviously individual, but at the same time, I've spent a lot of time talking to a lot of different audiences for a plethora of different reasons. So I feel like if you like the way I talk, you're going to stay here. So whether you're stupid or not is irrelevant. I'm going to talk this way, and I'm always going to talk this way. So you can always come here for consistent me. Exactly. Uh, I, I We're here two entirely. hours every Thursday for reason. Oh, sorry, carry on. No, I was going to say, I agree entirely. Um, again, being a witch, being a priest, I do a lot of ritual stuff throughout the year. And there's a, a general rule for witches that we always try to write a ritual when we're writing it for the most uh, experienced person that's going to be at the ritual because if we're writing it for the most experienced person the most experienced person will get something out of it and the people who are not as experienced will get to see what they're go working towards 
That's and so awesome. they will be inspired. That's a right? really awesome way of thinking about it and saying it. I mean, that makes way more sense. Why not? If you show everybody the lowest level so everybody can join, you never go past the lowest level. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. I'll, you know, I mean, and that's that's just how we operate, right? We, we write um, what we're doing under the assumption that the person with the most experience in the room is going to get something out of it. And the if we do that, then still the youngest people in the room are still going to get something out of it. Um, they're going to get to see what they can be. Right. And that's that's a wonderful thing, I think. Well, it gives more reason to stay. Yep. I may not be good today, but I could be that good tomorrow. And that is the whole reason. Like, I mean, that's part of what this show is showing us that we don't do. Like, these people are giving up the chance to get any kind of satisfaction out of joys from promotion. Like, they're going to work, and they might get a gift card if they wake up with a bandage. Yeah. They don't know what work they did. So when they go to their friend's house, and their friends are all talking about the books they wrote and the movies they saw and the things they did and contributed to society day in and day out, they're like, yeah, I... uh and I went to work and I got off work. Yeah, yeah it actually and I reminds meant to say me. Say this. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say it actually reminds me of when I was working for uh, a company that was dealing with pretty classified information. When I got home and somebody would ask me about my day, I would have to respond with "My day was fine." I wasn't allowed to say what actually happened. I wasn't allowed to talk about anything that could have happened at work. I just had to give this very neutral, very "My day was fine." It's ultimately why I left the job because I couldn't ta handle that level of separation between my two my two worlds. Yeah, yeah. No, the secrecy for me was was really starting to get to me as well, and that was one of the reasons that I ultimately uh, changed jobs. And one, well, not really the reason, but definitely one of the contributing factors. And so, yeah, I don't. That's why I don't like to be that way. I try to be as straightforward as I can. I try not to diverge too much. I mean, there's time and place. So I wonder when we'll get to that part. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to say the thought that came to mind with the first episode when he had his head injury was I found it interesting that they blatantly lied. And I found that interesting because I would think with an operation like this, you'd want to try and place it, play closer to the truth, which... You know, maybe it would be too much of a ramification of, of but like maybe instead on the note, what they could have written was you were uh, conducting an orientation for a new employee and, uh, you know, things didn't work out. We fired that employee. They didn't. But that's like an explanation that's more believable or that that plays it closer to what actually happened versus, oh, you uh, hit your head on something. Here's a gift card, because now all that does is create uh, more suspicion. Attack well, yeah, because you wonder out. if you got beat at the office and they just said it was an accident. Yeah. Right. I'm curious to see what Helly's uh, explanation for her arm injury is going to be because that's a little more than... Uh, that's something that takes a little more than a couple of days to heal from. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So. That's a good point. All right. Well, now for my favorite part of this segment... Uh, any other predictions for in, in the immediate future? I know we touched kind of on what the future resolution is, but what, what do we think is going to happen soon? Quinn, I'm going to let you go because you uh, definitely got it closest to the head the first time. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you for that. Um, I think we're going to find out that the smiles there... Um, I think we're going to find out that every one of the people in the, those smiles is probably dead. That um, something about the reintegration process or whatever um, messed with their their brain chemistry or messed with their head in some fashion. That it plastered that smile on them as they died. And that's the picture they took. And the reason why you don't see the rest of the face is because it's really grotesque after that. Pretty much my thoughts exactly. John, go ahead. I wonder what's going to become of Petey. 
Um, and I also wonder what the map means. I don't know if you guys caught that at the end of the, like the very end of the episode, he's changing out the pictures and there's a map of the building and one of the parts is circled mind. And the directors, whenever they it. appear, they're quiet. Yeah, that, that's another part. He kept it. Why did he keep it? So, I, I'm not sure. I don't know what's going to happen next. I wonder if the next episode is going to be another throw around. Like, they gave us a little exposition, just enough to tease to get us to come for sure to the next episode. And then they might distract us, for one. It's really hard to tell. But I'm excited. I wonder if there's going to be an uprising. I wonder how extreme the first one was or the last one was to like segregate the departments so aggressively. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. This one seems like there's a lot that could happen. Yeah, I, I so I, I do think uh, we do have a uh, perspective writer comment in the chat. There's spoilers in this video. Um. I suppose. I mean, this is the official trailer that we're just cycling through. Uh, there, it's definitely showing us stuff we haven't seen yet. But, I mean, there's plenty of other theories and implications we can draw from. And um, I should mention, we're discussing last week's episode before t next week's airs. Before tomorrow's. Tonight, yeah, tomorrow's. Actually. Yeah, tonight's airs. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I like about this. We do a little overview, recap of episode three, and we, we put in our predictions that we get to watch in, like, you know, four hours, so... Um, yeah, I think that episode four is probably going to, I uh, got a couple of bots to snipe in the chat and I do think that what we're going to see, oh no, wait, I already sniped those bots. Never mind. It just popped them back up again. I think we're going to see a lot more X. It's just going to be probably more world building but there'll probably be something that'll happen that'll explain a bit more of what, what probably this company's doing, what's going on. Um, at the same time, I could also see it go in a different direction where we're going to see more of just Mark's life on the outside. And, oh, the other thing that I totally forgot to bring up, the this is what I found really fascinating, was that apparently it is not even allowed to suggest that reintegration is possible i found this fascinating that why they would why would the board hammer that fact so hard you know hmm. like why is it so important to them that they no no integration is impossible like it lends more possibility that they they're permanently severed now you know what i mean like what's what's the secret that's being hidden there what's the secret that's being kept uh, to to basically get to the point where oh no, it, it, there's no such thing as reintegration. It, it's impossible. It, you can't do it. It's just not. It's just it, that's what they seem to not only claim that, but it's fascinating that that it's it's like they believe it so much that the board members are intent on keeping it that way. You know what I mean? So it's. I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see more. Of course, that's that's why we're here talking about it. Is because this this is a very well done psychological thriller. And so yeah, I think I think predictions for episode four are mine are going to be that it's either going to go it's either going to be more of what we saw last week or it's going to focus probably more on Mark or maybe somebody else. It might give us Irving's Audi. We might meet somebody else's Audi for once. Mm. instead of just following marks which i would like to see i also um, think not this episode but the next episode like not this episode tonight but the one after it we're gonna get some real answers because we're gonna have to if we're gonna you know they're gonna have to answer some of the questions at that point in the series like yeah. just from like a writing arc right yeah, I, I agree. I think we could maybe get away with one more episode of, of world building backstory exposition, but but yeah, you're right. Next next week should probably we'll probably expect some some thrilling action <laughs> yeah. in the form of, you know, passive aggressive office nonsense. So yeah, no, I, I, I think this show is great and I am looking forward to seeing tonight's episode and next week's episode and, and continuing to, to track and, and keep track of theories. But I uh, 
I think we'll just have to wait and see at this point. Um, yeah.